Today I'm going to answer a question from a student who goes by the name of AD Electronic Teardowns. And whatever your real name is, I see your screen name show up in the comments quite frequently and I really appreciate those comments. Now let's get to your question. Now the question's a little complex and I think uh, that some people might have trouble following it. So what I'm going to do is draw the circuit and tell what I think the question is. So the question is on the series of videos about the linear power supply. And if you haven't seen that series, please see the link in the description below. And we have a transformer, a rectifier, and a filter. And once we come through those, we're going to have uh, some DC voltage. Let's say it's going to be a 12 volt power supply. So we need a 12 volt transformer, a rectifier, and a filter. And after going through all of that, we expect maybe about 18 volts DC. So coming from the filter is 18 volts and that's going to go to a NPN transistor. That's going to go to our load. Now this resistor is not really a resistor. It just represents whatever circuit we have out here. And usually that's going to be a variable resistor because that circuit might demand more current sometimes and less current other times. So its impedance is changeable. And then we have a voltage reference. So here's a resistor going down to a Zener diode. And that voltage reference goes to the base of the transistor. So we want plus 12 volts here. And we expect to have a voltage difference between the base and the emitter of the transistor of about 0 0.7 volts. And it's going to be higher on the base than on the emitter with an NPN transistor. So we have 12 volts. We're going to have 0.7 volts higher here. So we need a 12.7 volt Zener diode, which gives us 12.7 volts there because that Zener diode is basically a smart variable resistor that changes its resistance to whatever it takes to maintain its rated voltage. And then we just have to have this resistor here to um, maintain the right current. We'll talk about how that works in a little while. So there's the basic series regulator, reference voltage, pass transistor, and load. And the question is, can we simply eliminate the transistor and put the load directly here? I mean, we have a known voltage that doesn't change here. Why not move the load to here? Eliminate that transistor. And of course, if we want 12 volts, we just have to change that to a 12 volt Zener diode. So we would now have 12 volts here. It's a parallel circuit. This is in parallel with that. And so 12 volts, 12 volts. Would that work? And the answer is, yes, it would. What we have here is what's called a shunt regulator. I do talk about shunt regulators in the series about power supplies, but it never hurts to talk about things more than once. So. That is what we have here. So let's see what problems we might have and why we might not want to do this. So let's say this is a very light load. Let's uh, do a little bit of design work here. Let's say uh, 12 volts. A 12 volt Zener diode would have a rating at around 40 to 60 milliamps off the top of my head. So let's say its operating current is 50 milliamps, which means it's going to have 12 volts when there is 50 milliamps flowing through it. Now, it is a smart resistor, basically, and if that current increases, it'll lower its resistance to maintain that 12 volts, but it's not perfect. So if that goes above 50 milliamps, that'll creep a little bit above 12 volts, maybe 12.1, 12.2. If it goes below 50 milliamps, it'll creep down, might go to 11.9, 11.8, but it's going to be pretty close to 12 volts regardless of the current that flows through it. So we just need to figure out what resistor we need here to give us 50 milliamps. So where is that current going to come from? It's going to come from there, go through there. So we have that 50 milliamps going through this resistor. And how much voltage do we have there? Let's move this out of the way. So I'm going to draw my voltage there. Kirchhoff's voltage law. We have our total voltage, which is 18 volts, and the two other voltages have to add up to that. So 12 volts plus watt equals 18. That's going to be 6 volts. So 12 volts, 6 volts adds up to 18 volts, which means we have 6 volts across this resistor. So we expect 50 milliamps through it, or we want 50 milliamps. So 6 volts, 50 milliamps. 
that will tell us what resistor we need here. It's Ohm's law. If you know your voltage, you divide into it. So 6 volts divided by 0 0.05 amps equals 120 ohms. Nice, easy resistance there. Nice, even numbers. So that's what we need for that. However, we also have current going through the load here. How much is that going to be? Let's say that's just one milliamp. It's a very light load. And so I'm going to go ahead and change this. The truth is that we don't need to be this precise by any means. This will probably work as well with 100 ohms or 150 ohms. But just to make a demonstration, I'm going to recalculate that based on the fact that there's one milliamp going here. So what do we have? We have a series circuit splitting off to a parallel circuit. So we need to remember how series parallel circuits work. If you don't, look in the description for the videos and reading material on that. So what we have is our current going through here, splitting off. And we want 50 milliamps to go through the diode. And where is that 50 milliamps coming from? It's coming through this resistor, but we also have this 1 milliamp going through there. So we have these two currents. They must add up to the current going through the series part of the circuit. So we are going to have 51 milliamps going through that resistor. So 51 milliamps here, it splits off. 50 milliamps goes that way, 1 milliamp goes that way. What's the resistor going to be? Once again, Ohm's law, divide our current into our resistance. So 6 volts divided by 0 0.051. That's 117.6 ohms. And once again, you don't need to be this precise, and you're not going to find that anyway, but I'm just making a point here. So there we have the circuit. 51 milliamps through here, 50 milliamps that way, 1 milliamp that way, no problem. Now let's see what happens if we remove the load. So we had one milliamp going through here, but there's no longer a current path here. We have removed the parallel circuit, so now we have a simple series circuit. No, let's just erase that, get it completely out of the way. Now we have a simple series circuit, and what do we have? We still have 6 volts here. We still have 117.6 ohms there. We still have our Zener diode, which is going to adjust its resistance to whatever it takes to maintain 12 volts there. So 12 volts, 6 volts. 117.6 ohms, we still have 51 milliamps flowing through this resistor. But where is it going to go? Well, the Zener diode is going to adjust its resistance to be just right that that but can't go anywhere else anyway. So it's going to maintain that. And that 51 milliamps is going to still go through here and it has to go somewhere. The 1 milliamp can't go that way, so it has to go this way. So it increases that to 51 milliamps. Not going to change things much. It's probably going to increase the voltage a little bit, but we don't care because the load is gone. Either we removed it or it burned out or something like that, and nothing special has really happened. So that would work. So a shunt regulator. But what happens if we have a bigger load? Let's redraw this just to clean it up. There's our resistor, our Zener diode. and our load. And I'll make it variable because I can. Let's say now it's a 1 amp load. So we've got 12 volts and 1 amp. So that's going to be basically a 12 ohm resistance. That might go up and might go down and change the current, but let's say nominally it's uh, 1 amp. So that's what the load is. It's just a variable impedance, and we can just represent that by a resistor. So that's not really so important at this point. But anyway, we have a 1 amp load. Now we have our same diode, which wants 50 milliamps. And there's going to be 12 volts across it, because it's a 12 volt Zener diode, rated at 50 milliamps. And important for this point here, let's just say it's a small Zener diode, like you might buy almost anywhere for a buck or so or maybe even less in quantity. And let's say it's a 1 watt Zener diode, which is a typical power. So, now what resistor do we need here? Well, now we have a lot more current going through that resistor because, once again, series part of the circuit, parallel part of the circuit. The current is going to go through here and split up, so we have a total of 50 milliamps that way, 1 amp that way. Where does it come from? It comes through here, which is still 6 volts across there. And so we have 1 
0.05 amps. One amp plus 50 milliamps. 50 milliamps is 0.05 amps. So 1.05 amps going through that resistor and then it splits apart. 50 milliamps goes that way, one amp goes that way. So what's that resistor going to be? So six volts divided by 1.05 amps gives us 5.71 ohms. Now, once again, we don't need to be this precise in the real world, but I'm making a point here. So 5.71 ohms, six volts gives us 1.05 amps. That goes through this resistor. It splits here into the parallel circuit, 50 milliamps that way, or 0.05 amps that way, one amp that way. Everything's just fine. So it still works. But now let's see what happens if we remove the load. So the load is removed, disconnected, burns open or something. So now there's no longer a path for this one amp to flow through here. What's going to happen over here? Did these voltages change? No. No matter what happens, this diode is going to adjust its resistance. If the current increases through the diode, it's going to adjust its resistance until it has 12 volts across it. So it's going to maintain that 12 volts, just change its resistance to maintain it. This resistance isn't going to change. So we still have 12 volts, 6 volts, 6 volts across 5.71 ohms. We're still going to have 1.05 amps going through that resistor. Where is it going to go? It can't go this way. So we're back to a series circuit. That current has to go this way. And basically the diode has adjusted its resistance to accommodate that current. And so now all 1.05 amps is now going through our Zener diode. It's a 1 watt Zener diode. Can it take that? Well, let's find out. We have 1.05 amps and 12 volts to find our power. We simply multiply our current and our voltage. So 12 volts times 1.05 equals 12.6 watts. This is what we call releasing the magic smoke. We just burned up that diode because we had a one watt diode dissipating 12.6 watts, it's not gonna take that for more than a fraction of a second, it's gone. So there's the problem with a shunt regulator. If you have a lot of current going through your load, if that load reduces, like if the impedance increases and demands less current, whatever current does not go through here gets dumped into the Zener diode because the Zener diode is going to change its resistance to keep everything balanced. So the current will stay the same here. So whatever doesn't go there has to go there. So with a shunt regulator, we either have to use it with light loads, where if we take the load out and the current shifts to the Zener diode, it's not enough to damage it, or we need a hefty Zener diode that can take it. So we need a Zener diode that can take at least, well, let's say 13 watts. Do they have those? Yeah. There we have right up there is a 50 watt 12 volt Zener diode, cost about nine bucks or something like that. So they have them, they're not incredibly expensive, so you could design it. And if you wanted to design a shunt regulator, um, there are disadvantages to it. For example, even if you remove the load, you're still taking your full current through the circuit. But if that makes sense to you for some reason, even either for compactness or cost or whatever, yeah, shunt regulator works. But there are advantages to the series regulator. So let's convert this to a series regulator, as we're familiar with. That's going to go, I'm going to make this go to a Darlington pair, and you'll see why for a moment. Or should I say, in a moment. A little sloppy drawing there. There's our two transistors. This might be something like a, a 2N2222, and that's going to be like a 2N3055 or other power transistor. So a small signal transistor and a power transistor. And you'll see why I did that in a moment. Here's our load over here. And it's one amp. And 12 volts. And this is going to have to be increased to 12.7 volts. So let's, we don't need to be perfect about this. I'm not going to be particularly perfect about this because we don't need to be so perfect. So here's 5.3 volts, 
12.7 volts. And this is going to be back to about, oh, somewhere between 100 and 150 ohms. You don't need to be too picky about it because the current doesn't need to be perfect. Let's say it's 130 ohms, I think is about right. Okay, so now we have our approximately 50 milliamps going that way. And with these two transistors, let's say this has an HFE of 10, and that has an HFE of 100. You multiply that together, so that together they have an HFE of 1,000. So to get this one amp through here, I only need one milliamp through there. So I'm going to have 51 milliamps going through there. And as we saw before, if something goes wrong and this one milliamp stops flowing and that dumps into here, it's not going to make much difference. Let's calculate the power just to show that this is going to work just fine. So we have 12.7 volts and 50 milliamps. Let's find out what the power is. 12.7 times 0 0.05 equals 0.635 watts. Okay, that's well under the one watt. So now let's increase that to 51 milliamps. Something goes wrong here and that current stops flowing. We remove the load, so we no longer have current flowing into the transistor, so that one milliamp gets shifted over here. So now we have 51 milliamps. Let's see what the power is. 12.7 12 12 times 0 0.051 equals a whopping 6.47 watts. So it doesn't change enough to hurt the diode. So this circuit, if we remove the load and the current shifts over to the diode, it's not enough to hurt it. And another advantage of this is when we are operating, we have one amp going this way and 51 milliamps going that way. But if we remove the load and that one amp stops, this one milliamp also stops because there's nothing to, uh, for it to flow into. So that one milliamp does what? It goes into here and it increases the power, but not much. But this one amp just goes away. So in the shunt regulator, if you remove the load, yes, we can have a diode that can take the current if we remove the load, but we always have that full current flowing even if we remove the load. Here, if we remove the load, the current through the load simply stops flowing. So that's uh, another advantage of a series regulator. So yes, a shunt regulator will work. It has its advantages, it's simple, but a series regulator has its advantages also. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.